Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and the WTA Finals draw has just come out, and we have some interesting matchups in the group stage for the WTA Finals, of course. It's happening in Texas this year. It was in Mexico last year, and it used to be in Asia, but because of restrictions, it's been moved, and it's going to be a big, big event over the next week. Let's go have a look at the group stage and some of the matchups that we're going to be seeing. So we've got two groups of four players, the top eight players of the world, and Tracy Austin group. We have Sviantec, the world number one, Goff, the world number four, Garcia, the world number six, and Kazakina, the world number eight. So familiar names for Igor Sviantec. And of course, we know about that Garcia matchup. And then we've got the Nancy Ritchie group with Jabir, the number two, Pagula, the number three, Zachary, the number five, and Sabalenka, the number seven. And we've seen a few of those players play over the last few months as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But let's zoom in on the Tracy Austin group to start with and look at the potential matchups. Remember, everyone has to play each other in the group stage and the top two players of the group with the best records go to the semifinals. So Sviantec, her record against Coco Goff is four and zero. And the last time they played, was in San Diego a few weeks ago, where Sviantec got the win and ended up winning the trophy. So a favorable matchup there for Sviantec against Garcia. She's got a 1-1 record with Garcia winning their last match, which was a clay court event in Poland just after Wimbledon. And then against Kazakina, Sviantec has a 4-1 record against with their last match being at the French Open in that semi-final. So two really good matches there for Sviantec and the one tough one being the one against Garcia. Now, if we look at Coco Goff's record against her group, of course, she hasn't won a match against Sviantec. We just mentioned that. They played a lot there this year and the last time being in San Diego. Against Garcia, she has a 2-1 record against, so she's got a positive record, but she did just lose to Garcia at the US Open a couple of months ago. And against Kazakina, she has not beaten her in the two times they've played. 0-2 and two against Kazakina, with the last time being in Stuttgart earlier this season. So very tough group for Goff. Having lost her previous matches, to everyone in this group, so she's gonna have to turn it around. Having a look at the Garcia head-to-head, -head, of course, she has got a 1-1 record against Fiontech, winning their last match, so that's very interesting to see how they pair up. Against Goff, she has a one-win, two-loss record, but like I said, she did beat Goff at the US Open a couple months ago, and she's got a 1-1 record against Kazakina, with Kazakina winning their last match last year in San Jose, so it's been a while since she's played Kazakina. So an interesting little part there for Garcia. We expect her to do well based on her form in the last six months, but it's gonna be a little tricky, especially that Kazakina match. It might be the one that decides it. And then talking about Kazakina, she's got a one and four record against Fiontek. The last time they played was the French Open, so not a great record there. Against Goff, she's won both their matches with their last match being in Stuttgart a few months ago. And as I mentioned, just the two matches against Garcia split down the middle at 1-1. They haven't played for over a year. So I reckon it's gonna come down to that if Fiontek wins all her matches, the winner of Garcia versus Kazakina is probably going to make up the second semi-final. I think Goff's got the toughest draw for sure. Let's go have a look at the Nancy Ritchie group now. And I think this is the one that's going to be the most random because of the form that most of these players are in. So let's start with Jabir's record against the rest of the group. So against Pagula, she's got a 3-2 and two record, a winning record. And she won their last match was in Madrid, which was the final of Madrid before the French Open. Against Zachary, she's got a 2-1 and one record against her. And she won their last match in Rome, which was an absolute epic. Coming back from, I think it was 5-2 down or something in the final set. So they've played some really fun matches. And then against Sabalenka, she's got a losing record. One win, two losses. But they haven't played since Wimbledon last year. So it's been a long, long time since they've crossed paths. So a good little draw there for Jabir. Got some winning form over some players. But I think that Sabalenka matchup is going to be really interesting. Looking at Pagula now. And as I just mentioned, against Jabir, she's got a 2-3 and three losing record with their last match being that Madrid final a few months ago. Against Zachary, she's got a losing record as well, two and three, but she did just beat Zachary in the final of Guadalajara a couple of weeks ago, so she'll be feeling good about that. And she has a bad record against Sabalenka, one win, three losses, with their last match being in Rome, Sabalenka winning it. So that could be a little tricky there for Pagula. And remember, she's also playing doubles with Coco Goff, so she might even get a little bit more tired than the rest of them. Having a look at Zachary's record, she's got a losing record against Jabir, one and two, but of course they played that epic in Rome a few months ago. Against Pagula, she's got a winning record, but of course they just played two weeks ago and Pagula got the win, so maybe the confidence against Pagula isn't quite there based on the recent form, so that'd be a tough matchup. And then against Sabalenka, she's got a losing record, two wins, four losses, but she did beat Sabalenka this time last year in the WTA Finals. But that was an epic match. It was very, very close. So it's hard to say that Zachary could beat her again based on the head-to-head, -head, but we'll see. I mean, Zachary did surprise us in Guadalajara. And then Sabalenka, the final player in this group, 
She has a winning record against Jabir, 2-1, but they haven't played since Wimbledon last year. She has a winning record over Pagula, 3-1, with their, her last win being in Rome against Pagula. And she has a 4-2 record, winning record against Zachary. Hasn't played her for a year and lost their last match. So in terms of who's got the best record against their group, Sabalenka's beaten every player multiple times in this group. She has a winning record against all of them. So confidence-wise, Sabalenka should be feeling good. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon is going to happen? Who do you think is going to win? Is anyone going to beat Sviantec? I think that's the real question. Does anyone pose a threat against Iga Sviantec? Because she's beaten all these players this year, except for Garcia. Except for Garcia. But Garcia's gone through a lot right now. She just split with her coach. So is Garcia's head going to be in the game? That's the question. I think it might be that Garcia-Sviantec match that we're all looking forward to the most. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon? Who's going to win the WTA Finals this year?